Hey, if you are a beginner drummer who's just bought a drum set, maybe your first drum set, and you've got a hi-hat on a hi-hat stand, I don't want you to make the same hi-hat adjustment mistakes that I made 15 years ago. I made some pretty dumb mistakes looking back, but hey, you don't know what you don't know. I wanna help you not make those mistakes because not properly setting up your hi-hats could actually result in certain things being more difficult to play down the road even years down the road, as I experienced for myself. So I wanna spare you that, let me help you avoid this. Let's get your hi-hats instantly sounding better so that you're feeling like the pro drummer you're capable of becoming. It all starts with adjusting the five critical hi-hat and hi-hat stand optimization points so that your hats are immediately easier to play and sounding more professional. You can do this, let's dive in. Hey, welcome to The Non-Glamorous Drummer. I'm so glad you're hanging out today. I help self-taught beginner drummers know what to practice so that they can master the drums more quickly, nailing songs, and becoming the player other people want to jam with and have in their band. And hey, speaking of knowing what to practice, I've got a free PDF I want you to grab in the description below that will help you do just that because one of the biggest struggles I hear from self-taught beginners, especially when you're just learning online and you don't have a teacher sitting down with you week to week, is what should I be practicing? I feel overwhelmed, I feel scattered, I'm not growing, what do I need to practice? I've got a su super simple method for you that's gonna help you out. This is basically the new version of the Know What to Practice guide you've heard me talk about for years. That's been a super helpful guide to so many people, but I've made like the 2.0 version that is more simple, streamlined, and just linear, step-by-step, -step, geared specifically for beginners. This is exactly what your daily practice session should look like. Whether you've got 30 minutes in, in, a, in a day to practice or an hour to practice, this is what each session should look like so that you know you're making progress every day. You're not having to feel overwhelmed because it's simple. It's actually fun. <laughs> and it makes sure that you're hitting all the key areas, you're not missing anything. And uh, the best thing, best part of all is it's all laid out for you. No decision making, no figuring out what to practice. This is what you practice so that you know what to practice so that you grow day after day and can then do whatever you want to on the drums and eventually master the drums. The results are incredible when you stick to this consistently for three months, six months, and especially a year. So all in the description, go grab that PDF, totally free. I wanna help you out with that. If, you, if you're a total beginner, you've just bought a kit or maybe you've upgraded from an electric kit, this is what, this was me as a beginner. I had an electric kit for two years and then I started taking lessons and at that same time upgraded to an acoustic kit because I could tell that, okay, if I'm, if I'm gonna be serious about this, I really wanna have a, a real drum set to learn on, even if I'm having to muffle it down for volume constraints. This was when I was a high school kid practicing in my bedroom above the kitchen in my family's house. And so I got my first acoustic kit with a hi-hat stand and all this stuff. And <laughs> as a beginner, I spent the first few months with my hi-hat clutch upside down. And uh, it's pretty funny to think about now, but what I was doing was actually putting my hi-hat clutch on this way. Well, it looks really stupid now because the symbol's upside down, but imagine the symbol's the other way around. This is how I thought it was, and I was trying to figure out like how is this supposed to work now? It's really hard to reach under here. And that's what I did for months until suddenly it hit me that, oh, wait a second, if I flip it over, it's gonna work a lot better. And so I tell you that to say, we all make dumb mistakes when we don't know what we don't know. And so if you're brand new to the drums and you literally have no clue how to set this thing up, that's totally fine. Doesn't matter how old you are or how long you've been playing on an e-kit before coming to an acoustic kit. Um, if you're a high school kid or you're a 65 year old retiree, I hope this is gonna help you out because there are no dumb questions. You don't know what you don't know. Let's get you adjusting your hats well because uh, I remember feeling pretty dumb and having to kind of give myself some grace because it's like, well, I, I, I don't know. <laughs> you figure this stuff out as you go, but I wanna save you some time. Um, so here we go. Today we're gonna learn how to optimize your hats and stand and instantly play them better, getting a more professional sound that sets you up for success. Because that's what's so cool. When you get these things adjusted well, it just makes it easier to sound good. And when you sound good, you feel more confident and you start growing faster. So a lot of, a lot of wins here. So here are the five critical hi-hat optimization points here. Number one, clutch looseness. So of course the step one is don't have the clutch upside down like I did, uh, because you, it'll be way easier if you do it this way. That way you can choose where it's gonna go on the rod and then tighten the wing nut into place. We'll talk about symbol spacing, you know, how high to actually have the top hat here in a moment. But the first most important thing that I did not give any thought to for maybe even years was how loose the symbol is on the clutch. Because what tends to happen, I used to teach a lot of local kids 
and you know they, they would get their first drum set and their dad would help them set up the drums and they'd be like putting a drill you know taking a drill to the kit to tune it up okay let's get all these you know these lugs as tight as we can get them so their drum set would sound like doo, 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 doo. Because it would be tuned so tight because the mentality is, all right, well, we got to screw everything in real tight so nothing comes undone. And that same mentality ends up coming over to the clutch where, all right, let's get this screwed down as tight as we can get it so that nothing comes undone. Well, the problem with that is you end up with this real stiff cymbal that doesn't really want to interact with the bottom cymbal. And what makes hi-hat sound cool is their interaction with each other. If you're playing open notes, you're doing like sizzly sounds, you're going to get way better cool splash sounds and open hi-hat sounds if you actually have some looseness from the top hi-hat. Like that. Doing sizzles or open notes. Like sloshy notes like that. They need to be able to move like this much. So in order to do that, this is what you have to play around with. So most, most hi-hat clutches are gonna have two nuts right here. These are actually two nuts up against each other. I know it looks like one, but this is two. We've got the felt beneath them. Then we've got another felt right here. And then we've got this big nut right here. Now this thing will only screw on so far. I've got to screw it on as tight as it will go. It will not keep threading past here. It stops. Now it also originally came with a screw that went in this hole. Depending on what stand you have, what clutch you have, you might have an additional screw you can tighten right here with a tuning key. Mine fell out years ago. <laughs> and I actually haven't missed it because if you tighten this down all the way, it's not going to go anywhere. But this is just the extra security because what you don't want is for this to come unscrewed while you're playing. That's not good. So we do want this right here to be as tight as it'll go if yours looks like this. Hopefully you've got something down here on the bottom that you can screw on and get it secure. Make sure it's secure so it's not going to come undone. Maybe there's something here to tighten with a key to make sure it's extra secure or you just you know get it really snug. That is what these two nuts right here are for. We can now loosen these or tighten these according to how loose we want this to be. So the gist of this is we're not using the bottom nut to determine the tightness of the clutch. We're using the top nuts. And so if you want it to be looser, just screw these looser so there's more space. If you want it to be tighter, screw them down. But we don't want it to be tight. We want to have some wiggle. And you can see how much wiggle we're getting here. Um, I remember years ago posting a video kind of about this way back when I was in, a, in my apartment, early, early days of this YouTube channel, and somebody commented and they were like, you're going to get keyholed, you're going to crack a cymbal. I've never heard of that happening. Yes, you've got metal on metal when you have a hi-hat clutch. Yes, when the clutch is loose, there's more metal on metal potentially happening, but I have never heard of a hi-hat cymbal getting keyholed and cracked and any of that happening. It's just never happened in my experience or anybody I know. Never heard any other professional drummers talk about it. It's never happened to any of my students, never happened to me. So don't worry about the metal on metal, it's okay, because this is still not moving as much as a crash or a ride, which we do wanna have on its plastic sleeve on the stand. So have this adjusted loosely. Make sure you put it on like this so that you can reach in and tighten it like this and not have to reach under like I did as a beginner, having no idea that mine was upside down and then get it into place. Uh, we'll talk about exactly where that placement needs to be in a minute. But now, critical optimization point number two, bottom hat angle. So I'll just give you a quick look at where mine is here. And uh, hopefully this will be helpful. You can see how, look at how, if you look at the bottom hi-hat here, the bottom symbol is slightly angled, basically like that, just not that exaggerated. The left side here, the, the far side away from me is a little bit higher. And that you can adjust. There should be a little screw of some sort underneath that bottom symbol. So in my case, it's this wing nut here as I tighten this and then pushes that in, which raises up this plate right here. So the important thing to make sure you're doing when you're adjusting your hi-hat, or rather when you're setting it up the first time, is make sure you've got this metal plate. There's a thin metal plate right here. It just looks like a ring here, but that's a disc. It's a plate that goes on very first. Then this big felt goes on. Then your bottom hi-hat symbol goes on. And those symbols should be labeled depending on what you bought. Usually you have a heavier symbol on the bottom and a lighter symbol on top. Some drummers like to switch it up and do things differently, but usually you're gonna get the better sound that, uh, that's more typical, the typical normal hi-hat sound by having your thinner, lighter symbol on top, heavier symbol on the bottom. But the reason we wanna have that angle is because if both symbols are perfectly parallel, think about it, when you close them, it's gonna, it's gonna barely make a sound. It's almost like the like an airlock that happens where it just goes boom, 
and doesn't make much sound. And so it's a really soft chick like that if the cymbals are exactly parallel. Versus you get a much more interesting sound. Right now I'm closing it with my left foot down. You get a much more interesting full chick sound when they have a little bit of slap, you know, because of that bottom hi-hat angle. It also gives you ability to go like this. Where you're pressing down with your foot and lifting your foot right back up to play a splash. Then if you close slowly, you get a sizzle. It's all possible because of the angle of that bottom cymbal. And it's also all possible because of how loosely we've adjusted the top cymbal. Remember, if we didn't adjust the clutch loosely, then we can't do that. It just sounds really clumsy. And because of that looseness, that flexibility, that allows us to be able to play really nice open notes without actually opening the hi-hats. This is a way to test this. Can you play an open note sound without actually opening them? They're just starting to barely crack open, but I can't even slip my pinky finger in there. That's about how far open we want them when we're playing open notes. So now getting into critical optimization point number three, this naturally leads us into, well, how far apart should our hi-hat cymbals be adjusted? Now, this is a really fun one because it gets pretty controversial because plenty of great drummers out there are going to disagree with me. So there's no right or wrong here. I'm just going to explain why I just mine the way that I do and uh, who inspired me to do it, do it this way and uh, why I think it works better. A lot of drummers don't do this, but uh, you can take your pick and decide, all right, uh, do I want to try it Steven's way or try it that guy's way? Whatever you want to do, they're your hi-hats. But hear me out here. I'll explain to you why I do mine the way I do. So I'll give you a closer look here. Look at how far apart they are. I have them at rest about an inch, really a little more than an inch, maybe an inch and a quarter on this side. Now remember, because of the bottom hi-hat angle, there's more space here, almost two fingers space on this side versus just one finger space on the other, and that's fine. So the reason I wanna have more space here is so that I can really play a firm chick sound. Just like I was showing you a minute ago, when we've got some looseness up here, when we've got some angle down here, and then we have some space, it allows us to play a loud chick. And if you're playing something that's kind of jazzy, um, if you're into jazz music at all, you're wanting to learn something like that and be able to play. That's the kind of thing you hear all the time in swing music. And it's very cymbal driven. And so those drummers are adjusting their hats like this. And so I'm no jazz drummer, but I spent a lot of time playing some jazz in my, my learning days of, you know, playing in big band in college. And I really liked that. And I really liked the feel I could get from that versus if we adjust our cymbals closer, most drummers have their cymbals about right here where they're just not very far apart. And you can still play chicks. You could do a groove like this. You can play some quiet chicks like that. It's, it's all right, but you're limited with how much volume you can get. And if you try to play a splash, it's kind of wimpy if we're honest, but if you open up your spacing a little bit, well now, whoa, big difference. And you can play those chicks a lot louder. And so if you really want to be able to do that kind of thing eventually and get a great high quality sound that sounds awesome and actually your hi-hat become an active voice in your groove, which is so cool and adds so much dimension to your playing, then you need to have that space. That's gonna help you so much. Here's the, another reason. I think this is the ultimate reason why we wanna have the space apart. I learned this from a Nashville drummer, Paul Mabry. He's originally from Australia. He's a Nashville session guy now. And he talks about when you play open notes on the hats. You know, I showed you a minute ago how we barely need to have them open at all to play the open note. But if we wanna make that open note sound really cool, we can go like this. Did you hear that? How it was kinda of like You know, we start the open note right here, so we get both cymbals sizzling and interacting, then we lift the top one off, and it's like it opens up the sound and allows it to project, which is pretty cool. 
So what if we play our open notes like that? So instead of playing, let's say we had our cymbals adjusted close. This is the way most rock drummers do it. Let's say we're right here. Our open notes would sound like this. Not bad, it's all right, but we can make this more interesting. We've got some more space and we now go like that. You tell me what you like more. Back to the first way. It's more static, you know, it just has its one sound and that's it. Versus we create this more dynamic open hat sound doing it this way. It's especially apparent with something slower. which is pretty cool. You really hear that projection, that opening, if it's a longer open note like that. And so that's a big reason for doing it that way. So you get more power with your chicks, you can do splashes, it opens up your left foot to more sonic possibilities. Plus you can make your open note sound a lot cooler. And so lots of reasons why to have your cymbals further apart. A lot of rock drummers just don't do that, I don't know why. Uh, some who have a double bass pedal like to be able to take their foot off and it'd be like this for playing open notes while their left foot is on the double bass. So, okay, I get that. Um, but if you really want a lot of left foot musicality, flexibility, versatility, go for the cymbal spacing. All right, two more things, two more critical optimization points. The fourth one is height. So we don't always think too much about hi-hat height, and there's a few things that could factor into this, but the most important one for you right now is what angle are you going to hit your hi-hats at? So if you want to eventually be able to play something like and play like that kind of pattern, especially if you want to get really fast, and do like that kind of thing that kind of bounces along, If you want to do that kind of thing, you've got to have a, a kind of a light touch to the hats and not hit them at too steep of an angle. So my beginner tendency was to see, all right, can I shred my sticks by like hammering into the hi-hat, which sounds ridiculous, but that's what I was trying to do as a beginner. So I was playing like this all the time. Putting all my, my anger into it <laughs> and my, wearing my hand out, breaking sticks. But that's not really a great sound, especially if you want to play especially if you wanna swing it like that. It's way easier to play smoothly and quickly if you have less of an angle. So instead of here being right here, and instead of using this part of the stick, use this part of the stick. So ask yourself this. All right, if I'm gonna play at this angle, this is the stick position I want. I'm gonna play where I'm hitting the edge right here at a slight angle. Where do my hi-hats need to be for that to feel good? And how high do they need to be? Because if they're too high, I'm gonna be having to play like this. That doesn't work. Uh, if they're too low, then my butt end might be hitting the snare. And so kind of, you, you just have to play around with it. I can't tell you the perfect spot, but for mine, if I'm, if this, if my snare is a clock, the hi-hats are about 1030. So 45 degrees to the left of my snare. Remember, I'm not facing the camera. I'm facing a little bit off axis here because the snare is the center of my kit. So if I'm facing 12 o'clock here on the snare, hi-hats are kind of in a 1030 direction. And they're slightly overlapping. And as far as height, if you want to copy mine, the butt end of the stick to the F and Firth is how high they are. I wouldn't mind going a little lower. If I'm playing a lot of quiet stuff, I can be down pretty low and it feels good. If I'm playing louder stuff, I wanna be up here because if you're playing really loud, yes, you can dig in more and go like this and you wanna have the cymbals a little further away from your snare mic. And so if you're recording, then you wanna have more of that space. A lot of times engineers want me to have my hi-hats higher, even though I like them being lower. It kind of comes back to the jazz thing of always liking, you know, things being down low and close together. But a lot of times in recording, you need to have your cymbals up higher away from the drum mics. So that's kind of another story, but just an additional factor there. So based on where you know you need your stick to land, what feels right as you're hitting the hats, that'll determine your placement and your height. And, um, you know, you can have them six, six inches or so higher than the snare. That might be a good starting point. All right, our fifth optimization point. Honestly, this one is less critical, and so I hesitated to include it, but I thought, well, 
Depending on what stand you've got, this might be something you can mess with, and it might actually be pretty important depending on what symbols you've got, like what kind of hi-hats you have or what size they might be. So let's get into optimization point number five. Number five, spring tension. So you might be like, wait, what are you talking about spring tension? Your, it's possible your hi-hat stand does not have this adjustment point. A lot of low-end stands don't. Like if you have a cheap old stand, it's not gonna have this. I know mine with my first drum set did not. Uh, but if you have a nicer stand, then it's definitely gonna have this. If you have, mine's a DW3000 two-legged stand, and uh, it definitely has spring tension control. Um, and so that's like the lower end of the DWs. And so depending on what you've got, you might have control over this. All right, get ready for some weird motion here while we move the camera down here. To point two, right here on the back of the stand, you can see that T-shaped thing that can slide up and down on that track. That is the spring tension control for my pedal. Yours is probably gonna look a little bit different, and that's fine. Mine's adjusted somewhere right in the middle. So, not much sense in keeping the camera right there on it because there's not a whole lot you can see, and your pedal's probably going to be different, but I want you to be aware of that. And the reason why that exists is because if you have small lightweight cymbals, you don't want the stand to just, you know, pop them up really quick. Um, but if you have bigger, heavier cymbals, some of my students have 15 inch hi-hats because they love the sound of them, I do too. I like putting crash cymbals on my hi-hat stand sometimes because they sound so cool. It's a fun thing to do if you've got some extra cymbals lying around. But if you do that, they're heavier. So if you've got a heavier cymbal, it's gonna be hard to really play splashes. It's gonna be hard to have a quick response from your stand unless you increase that spring tension. Likewise, if you have one of those little hi-hat tambourines or any kind of anything you put on your hi-hat stand, a lot of drummers like to do that to get you know interesting sounds and like put different fun stuff on the rod up here so you get like a tambourine sound with each chick. That's great, but for everything you stack on here, it's making it feel more sluggish. So that's where you wanna increase the spring tension to, to compensate for that. Just like with a bass drum, where you can tighten up the spring so that you have more resistance and more potential for speed because of a quicker response or less spring so that it doesn't feel like it's working against you. And so if you've got small cymbals and you feel like, you know what, I'm having a hard time like actually closing this. Like if you're going, you've got to make sure the end of your open notes are tight. Firm into the sentence, a nice period right there. Otherwise it's kind of just, it can easily get sloppy. Note length is important when we're dealing with hi-hat open notes. And if you've got too much spring tension and it's too hard to, in the note there, that's a problem. So that's where you wanna mess with that. Some hi-hat stands, by the way, have like a twisty thing on the bottom, like a black sleeve looking thing you can twist to change the tension, or maybe you slide it up and down and set it onto different like stair steps on the rod. Every hi-hat stand is different. That's why, like I said, there wasn't a whole lot of point in me showing you what mine looks like. So whatever yours is, mess around with it because that spring tension can be kind of that final piece of the puzzle just to make sure you're feeling really comfortable there on your hi-hats. So, to review. Make sure you've got looseness up here. Make sure you've got your clutch put together right so you've got looseness. Make sure you've got some angle down here so that you've got a nice slap and you can test it by going. You can test our first three things of clutch looseness, bottom hat angle, and cymbal distance apart just by seeing can I play a splash. Better yet, can I play a splash that then turns into a sizzle? I'll give you a closer look right here from the handheld. So can we go like this? So basically a splash and then slowly closing it. If you can do that, then you've got those first three things locked down, that's awesome. Then the final things of height, does it feel comfortable playing? As you're getting better at this, you can mess around with the height, but does it feel comfortable? Cool, get the height just not too high, not too low. Use common sense, you really can't go wrong with this. Adjust it to what feels right to you. And then adjust your spring tension just according to how heavy your top cymbal is. This one I've got on here isn't very heavy, so I'm not using a lot of tension, but if I were to put bigger cymbals on here, heavier cymbals, I want more tension. If I put a tambourine on here, I want more tension. So again, just common sense. And if, you're, if your stand doesn't have spring tension adjustment, that's fine. If you find that there's too much tension, then just um, find something to, to lay up here on top that it's a little bit heavier. I remember doing that one time with a stand and seeing like, huh, I like put some little sand weights up here around the top. Now it feels right. It doesn't matter that it's too springy. So if you have a stand that's too springy, just do that. Just weigh it down a little bit, put something else on top to add some, some extra weight to compensate for too much tension. So 
Follow these steps. Even if you're a total beginner, you're brand new to your, to your new drum set, you're gonna get an instantly better sound. Your hats are gonna be easier to play. You'll be feeling more confident as you grow, knowing that, uh, all right, I've got these in a great spot and I can get all the sounds I wanna get as I'm learning left foot coordination, as I'm learning to get my hand to interact with my foot. We've got other lessons here on the channel all about that, about playing barks, about doing left foot chicks and splashes and timekeeping. So much cool stuff you can do with your left foot. I'm so glad you've hung out with me today and I'm glad you're interested in getting your hi-hat sounding good because it's such a left out voice on the kit for so many drummers, especially rock drummers. They just don't use it that much because it's hard. <laughs> it's your weak foot we're talking about. So it's sometimes hard to really use it to its full potential, but you're totally capable of doing it. Coordination is a learned skill. And um, be sure to grab the e-guide I told you about earlier because that's gonna help you out a bunch with this too. There's a lot of good coordination stuff in there that is gonna help you with getting some left foot timekeeping happening and just being able to use your left foot as an active voice and do really cool stuff on the hi-hats. Because I think hi-hat mastery is something that'll set a great drummer apart from a typical average drummer. So a quick question for you before you go, which of these five adjustment points was most helpful to you? Were there any of these that you just, you were totally different from me and you switched it to what I was doing and you're like, Steven, this is great. Or is there something you totally disagree with me on? <laughs> we can get a debate going, totally fine. Um, tell me which of these five adjustment points was most helpful to you. Clutch looseness, distance apart, um, and then height were my three big ones. I think those were the three biggest ones for me. Tell me what the biggest was for you. Leave a comment below. Thanks for hanging out today. Know that as always, you can do this. You can master the drums. I'm so glad you're getting started. Stay non-glamorous and I'll see you on the next lesson.